Hi everyone, this video is going to be an overview of the course content and the course framework for the AP Chemistry exam. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the big ideas that are in AP Chemistry as well as the units that the AP Chemistry exam is built upon, as well as how you can use the unit guides as a way to structure your review. So if you look at this course content document, um, which is called AP Curriculum Student for you. This has the big ideas that talks about the four main big ideas. So these big ideas are kind of just the foundation of the class and it lets you see how everything is tied together. There are only four big ideas. There used to be six big ideas and what they did is instead of having six different big ideas, they created four overarching big ideas that a lot of different topics can go into. So more than likely you're going to see free response questions are going to have different concepts, but it might all be under one big idea. So big idea one is scale, proportion, and quantity. So on a lot of the unit guides, you might see SPQ that's talking about big idea one. So this is looking at any quantities in chemistry. You might be looking at explaining or predicting or justifying your answer, but to justify it might say use a calculation. And so that's the first big idea is kind of just using uh, the idea of some sort of quantity either at the macroscopic or at the microscopic level. The second big idea is structure and properties. And so this is looking at properties of substances either at the large scale or at the uh, micro scale, thinking about particle diagrams. And this is looking at how to reason for you know any prediction. So what's your justification? And it might ask you to use properties as a way to justify. So big idea three is transformation. So this is looking at rearrangement of matter, chemical reactions. So you're looking at chemical reactions, what's happening at the uh, macroscopic level, so what you can see also at the particle level. And so you're looking at collisions, things like that with transformations. And then the fourth big idea is energy. So energy, you could think about heat, work, anything like that, as well as looking at equilibrium and how you can change equilibrium. So that's looking at the four big ideas. Each one of these paragraphs talks more about each of the big ideas. And then we get to the units. And so the units are the foundation of AP Chemistry. Um, the All of the topics, all of the content is split into nine units. Now this table here shows the units with the percentage of the exam weighting. So there are nine units in AP Chemistry. And then if you actually look at each of the unit guides, you'll see the topics, which are, are kind of the main ideas within each unit. So out of each of the nine units, we've essentially covered all of this. Uh, we only have a small amount remaining that ties under thermodynamics and then one part of chemical reactions. But you'll notice that intermolecular forces and properties is 18 to 22% and then acids and bases is 11 to 15%. Everything else is seven to 9%. So everything else is pretty um, evenly distributed with the exception of unit three and unit eight. Also in this document, it shows how the big ideas kind of spiral within each of the units. And then finally, it has this course at a glance. So the course at a glance is important because this is an easy way for you to see all of the topics under each unit. And so you'll see that unit one has eight topics, uh, unit two has seven, and you can actually go through, you can read what all of the topics are for each unit. And so you'll notice that the third unit, which is a majority, 18 to 22%, it's the, the highest weighting of any of the units, You'll see that actually has 13 uh, topics. And so this document lets you see all of the different topics within the nine units. And it's just a way for you to be able to really look at what you need to understand for the AP test. So that is just the AP curriculum kind of in general. What I want to do is specifically look at one of the unit guides. And I want to show you just some important parts of each of the unit guides. So if you look at the unit one guide, this is atomic structure and properties. 
what I've done is I have put each of the units into a PDF for you. And the first page of each one is the unit at a glance. And so what it has is all of the topics within that unit as well as a suggested skill. So the suggested skill is just something that AP might require you to do on the AP exam. And so it might ask you if you're looking at, at the AP exam, you know, for mass spectroscopy, it might be a multiple choice question that gives you a graph and it asks you to identify some information about isotopes. So those are your suggested skills. And then within the unit guide, you have each of the topics. And this is probably one of the most important ways that you can study is by looking at these topic pages. So each of the topics has its own page. So you'll notice that for the first topic, 1.1, it's moles and molar mass. Now on each topic page, this is your required course content. So the enduring understanding is kind of a, a long-term takeaway related to the big idea. So you'll notice that this is big idea one, scale, proportion, and quantity. But the enduring understanding is kind of a long-term takeaway that you want to make sure that you know. And then within that enduring understanding, you have learning objectives and essential knowledge. So the learning objective is what you need to be able to do with the knowledge in order to get to that enduring understanding. So this learning objective is what the AP exam will test you on. It will test you on these learning objectives. And then underneath the learning objective, you have the essential knowledge. And so the essential knowledge are your statements that describe the knowledge that you need in order to perform the learning objective. So in order to be able to calculate quantities, you need to know Avogadro's number. You need to know how to calculate moles when you're given mass and molar mass. So th this essential knowledge, if you think about creating a study guide, all of this essential knowledge is what you need to know. The learning objective is what they will use to create test questions, but the essential knowledge is what you need to know. And so as you go through these topics, you'll notice right, that each one has the enduring understanding and the enduring understanding for a lot of the information within the same unit will be the same enduring understanding. But the learning objectives will be different for each topic as well as the essential knowledge. Now you'll notice down here there's an X by interpreting mass spectra. And it says interpreting mass spectra of samples um, will not be assessed on the AP exam. This is called an exclusion statement. So an exclusion statement will define content or specific details that will not be assessed on the exam. So even though I gave you questions on mass spectra and I taught you about mass spectra and how to use it to uh, determine isotopes. It says that interpreting mass spectra containing multiple elements will not be assessed. And so it tells you kind of these exclusion statements tell you specifically what they will or will not test. So that's just a way to kind of show you how College Board uh, uses this curriculum and how you can best study over the next couple of weeks.